I, in my mind, I'm like, God, what if I have to like piss during the set? Like I should piss like 18 times before the set. Did you <laughs> choose did. the biggest instrument? So after you pee right before you go on and you got a little pee on your pants, <laughs> people can't <laughs> see it. it. <laughs> yeah. Brunch, hit it, boys. It's Monday and people are pissed. Our friend Kellen from the story so far is pissed because we just made him listen to Thunder Song uh, for 12 minutes. Thunder Song. <laughs> I'm in a terrible <laughs> mood. <laughs> this is like, this. Is, so that felt like an hour and a half of hell. And now we're just actually getting started with however long. Yeah, I kind of like the uh, kind of having to initiate our guests into being on the podcast. Welcome to my nightmare, bitch. <laughs> <That> <laughs> Something was, like that. That was like hazing. That was like worse than hazing. Uh, well, welcome to the podcast. Your fraternity <laughs> sucks. This is why I hate fraternities. <laughs> Your fraternity that wears, just rushed. wears black yeah. Yes. Yeah, we dress yeah. like LP uh, all the time. I look like shitty Steve Harrington with my... My jacket. That was a, that was a very sneaky. Like I'm gonna pick on myself by giving myself yeah, the, like the biggest compliment <laughs> in the world. Like oh, I'm gross. I look like Steve Harrington. Ah, oh, Steve Harrington. Like on his shitty days, looks amazing. I've actually been experiencing that. Phenom- like I'm growing my hair out a little mm-hmm. bit. Yeah. And when you have normal like short hair, your hair looks stupid and like shit in the morning. Mine gets pretty bad. It kind of looks like. Like frizzy and weird. Mm. I I haven't used his. Uh, what does he use in the show? He uses he some uses... sort of. Sp- oh, he uses the Farrah Fawcett yeah, spray. Farrah Fawcett spray. spray. Yeah. yeah, but like my like now with my hair is a little longer. When it's shitty and bad in the morning, it looks unbelievable. Yeah, Ooh. It's, yeah, it's like a little Good Steve, Steve Harrington for a little bit, and then you get in the shower, and then it'll, you look like Dave Grohl for like one minute, and then it dries, and, and then you look like Dave B. And then you look like Dave B. Which starts your like, day, right? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. We start here, and we just take, go straight down to here. Sure. Uh, but fuck, man. Uh, welcome to Boston. Thank you. I was just going to say, I've actually never been on your set because we've only ever talked like when, like over like Skype. Or, yeah. So, yeah. I don't often bring people to my mom's basement. Well, I was just going to say, I didn't know that living in your mom's basement was so lavish. It could be. I didn't <laughs> yes. know it could be so lavish. Yes. Usually yeah. this is like the least creepy basement I've ever been in. I, basements cool. are usually like in like Don't Breathe where you have like a turkey based. Did you watch? So you watch that shit too? Yeah. But you're into, you're into like the weird creepy movies. <laughs> I watch. I mean, I do have a pet snake. I watch a lot of horror yes. movies. Oh. Um, I'm yeah. so tempted I do. to because we've got the thunder machine over here. <laughs> that is your want, computer. <laughs> but if I start playing it, then uh, we run the risk of the episode being taken down because it has audio that's not ours. Yes. So I can't play it. Yes. But I really, when Kellen's mid sense, I really want to hit him with the boom, just the young gun. So I love how uh, we, you've renamed your computer the light, the Thunder Machine. Well, I wanted to leave some mystique as to how Thunder Song was getting on to the I've podcast. Just, I've just, like, finally got my composure back. <laughs> like, that was, like, I was legitimately flustered, like, by the fifth time that song came around. But you know how, like, some people get, like, a PS4 and they only use it for Netflix? Or yeah. they get, like, an iPad right. and only use I it have for a computer Netflix. and it's you just for Thunder. An, you have a MacBook so, that you only use to play the Thunder song. <laughs> we've, we've come up with a new, a new thing that, like, I guess, I don't know if this falls under, is it a prank, technically? It's like getting Rick It could rolled. be a goof. Thundering. It's, oh, yeah. It's a meme. Thund- yeah. It's a real life meme. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's Rick Ro- the new Rick Rowling is just playing the Thunder Cutting song. people off essentially by playing the chorus of that song. And by now, actually, we'll have. So by the time this comes out, we'll have probably thundered our Bruntouchables really hard. Yes. I, it, was, <laughs> it was Ryan's idea, Pete's idea, someone's idea to make a, uh, like a graphic teasing a new sale and then like link here and we could do a url shortener or something so people won't be able to see right. it's going to youtube you click owe on it, to it them. and it's it's like it's like in a lawsuit when if you like do someone damages and then you compensate them and they accept the compensation mm. if they accept your code they can't sue you for just blitzing them with this song <laughs> like that's what you're doing I you're just, giving them compensation for like this chorus that they obviously don't want to hear you know what ever. i just realized <laughs> we just spent like three thousand dollars to build this set, and our next twenty videos are going to just be tricks that don't even feature the set, <laughs> and it's just tricks of the people listening to Imagine Dragons when yes. they don't want to listen to Imagine. That's gonna be all. Like, oh what if we God, do like uh, like like serious announcement, and it's like both of us, one of us has like a hospital bracelet on or something. Like, I just. Uh, 
we, we we'd rather you hear it from us than from anyone else. But just a young bud. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look, look at my hand. This is like this is me having listened to Imagine Dragons. And can we? You have the technology that you can just grab. Uh, you could like grab the music video and yes. put it in. Yeah. We have to pitch it up or down. Mm-hmm. So we we're deciding whether or not the video of us watching Thunder for twelve minutes, listening <laughs> we'll to Thunder, ta- we'll will be, be up or down. down. If it's mm. well, I th- still think it might get taken down. Like, even if you change the pitch, maybe it should, and not even just because of the song or because of the copyright. It's because of the song. Like, yo, that itself. sucks. <laughs> it's like you, people shouldn't be exposed. It should be like a NC seventeen or like not. Safe it's like for work. sending someone with epilepsy uh, a gif. Exactly. We talked. We That's talked exactly about this before is. we got on the show. Yeah. Uh, you can be charged with a crime if you intentionally try to spark somebody's epilepsy with a with a gif of a strobe. Which, I want it's, it's to assault. be. I want assault. us to be arrested. For uh, inflicting for mental torturing. damage, yeah, by just I, because that's a torture a method. Song. Playing bad I songs will, is a torture method. I will turn to the authorities. If yeah. you thunder me, I will. That's my new goal. <laughs> Don't thunder me, bro. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's gonna be the name yes. of the episode for sure. Yes. Um, but I, I can't. I'm. I'm gonna be distracted the rest of this episode because all I'm thinking about is the different ways you can thunder somebody. Like there's so many it's the new icing somebody. Right. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Except you don't. Uh, it's for all ages. Now, what is peak thundering? The president? If you, you, can, you, if you could thunder the president. I bet you fucking could, though. If you tweeted at you Trump, like, can. did you see the guy that uh, tweeted at Trump during the uh, during the uh, the campaign? It was like, hey, uh, I have something interesting about Hillary you might like to know. Can you follow me so yeah. I can DM? Yeah. Yeah. So he DM'd him, and then he was like, yo, like, you, you ever just watch SpongeBob? And it was yeah. like something. He was like, what if Mr. Crab was like high the whole time? They're, <laughs> they're <laughs> and then Trump defi- blocked him. They're definitely like an inauguration band. Because like Three Doors Down did it. And like they were the only mm. band that would probably do Trump's inauguration. You, well, you know who wanted to was Backstreet Boys. They really? Brian they really wanted did. to, and they were That's like... Weird. It actually would have actually been very fitting that. now that we've learned that Nick Carter is problematic. Uh, it would have been very <laughs> fitting if one sexual assault man opened or did, performed at the other sexual assault guys thing. Maybe I just you have you have a band like Imagine Dragons who are very, I guess the word you use is problematic. They're not. Mm-hmm. They're like a very Catch like around. yes yeah. They're one of those like get used they, to it, buddy. They don't, they don't dip in like like politics or they're just very like just central. Hmm. Like, no, you know like. It's just aside from their music is the real only issue. You know well, what I mean? Them, well, them and uh, ex ambassadors are yeah. very much cut from the same cloth. Where if you, any, I've seen ex ambassadors play like ten times, and that's just because I've gone to a lot of events. They've they They're play one it. of those bands. I think that's a bad like those bands are here now to play those events, and then a new the new puppy comes along and ex-ambassadors looks at them like this and goes, why aren't we playing events anymore? Why, why are you why, taking away our why aren't, why aren't people coming to our shows? You still play our song Shit. at sporting events. Yeah, like why aren't we... Like I, I, at, at Super Bowl Media Day, they played... They were there. So when I think the NFL Network would go to commercial because they televised yeah. Media Day. Uh, so when they would go to commercial, they would show ex-ambassadors playing. So they, they were like, it's a crazy scene. We got so many people here. Lots of celebrities. Kel Mitchell. Like this thing. And uh, all right, take it away, ex ambassadors. And they're like, Everyone just the young, do we not sing that one? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Everyone goes, who? And then they play their song and they go, oh, oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, every single, I was telling this to you, every single ex ambassador's song sounds like it was written by one guy realizing, huh, this chorus somehow hasn't existed before. Let's build a song around that. Yeah. It's all just. Oh, 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 oh. I just wrote their next. Yeah, song. I was gonna say you just <laughs> yeah. you just They're like that's never been done. Now this can't go on video because now you're gonna <laughs> yeah. you're gonna sue it's us. It's gonna be detected. Well, by, no, uh, you say oh, that sounds like an ex ambassador <laughs> song. It's just gonna, an NDA is gonna come out before mm. you watch this episode that says yes. you can't use that hook I just created. Yes, to make a song. It's my hook. NDAs are. Have you ever signed an NDA before? Yeah, I, I guess you can't. To, oh yeah, I'm sure you've. Yeah, had to, yeah. Well, I worked. I well uh, before. Uh, not actually. Not a lot of people know this, so I can I could probably talk about it. It's probably interesting if. People Ooh, think I'm interested. Story. We'll be the judges of that. Yes. I know, which I don't think I'm necessarily that interesting. Ooh, off to a rough oh, start. Not interested. Uh, you know? co- uh, gonna gonna lack to, of confidence. Have a, not maybe maybe hot. I am interested. It's not hot. Digging yourself you a hole. You're not interesting. Mm. Uh, well, I'm just, uh, I'm I'm just playing it down. <laughs> I'm playing it down. So then, like my moderately interesting facts become more interesting mm, because people, you know, Ooh, my interest level is going down. As okay, speak. good. So I used to work for Fitbit. Ooh, yeah. So, um, ah, we'll pick it back up. But. um... 
I had to sign an NDA there because they talk about, you know, company secrets and stuff, mm. things that are going on that I'm about to spill on this show right now. Mm-hmm. That's when the sniper just, you know, gets me to drop. The no, well, they need you alive. So they would True. shoot you in the arm. And they'd play this. And they'd play a magic dragon. Yes. <laughs> You'd be like, all right, first things first. Just a young <laughs> gun. <laughs> so I worked there for a while. And then, uh, yeah, they made me sign an NDA because they don't want me telling people about their upcoming products that I was testing. I was mm. a product tester. So they basically put these unreleased devices on me and tell me to run for a really long time. Wow. And I would do it because they gave me money. So, hmm. yeah. I uh, I had a <laughs> job interview one time and at the beginning, it wasn't, uh, a person wanted to meet with me. And when I got there, they were like, before we go any further, I need to sign this NDA. And I was like, I'm living on the edge right now because I like I was I was like anything can fucking happen right now. Yeah, he mm-hmm. can be like, I'm going to steal the Declaration of Independence. I'm like, <laughs> fuck, I gotta tell someone about that. Can't sign an NDA. Mm, also, yeah. that's I realized after I was like, that guy really doesn't want people to know that he was thinking about hiring me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what? <laughs> it's like it could be it could be very damaging to that company that they were like that's the type of shit that you go for. Okay, they, they, this they, guy. Make, they make you paranoid. Like there was one. They sent me home one time with these headphones that, that are on the market now. But before they were on the market, they were these like headphones. And the thing about these headphones was like they could pick up outside noises, so like honking or like whatever. Mm. Like if you're running, okay, and so. Um, if you're listening to it though in like a public place, you weren't allowed. If someone asks you, "Hey, what kind of headphones are those?" You have to just be like, "Uh, uh," and then just like run. Because I, I, wh- <laughs> like, what do you say that's yeah. like normal in that situation? Like, I can't tell you, dude. Yeah, you know, like. So you've never heard of it, bro. And if you do <laughs> tell them, it's like, okay, these headphones pick up outside noises. Obviously, they're listening to everything I say. Ooh, you know, yeah. and then they're gonna, oh, right? Yeah, yeah. There, two guys in black suits are gonna show up in my house if I'm like, oh, these are the new headphones I'm testing for Fitbit. They're Did uh, Fitbit ever do yeah. any uh, sex? Stuff, sex equipment. Oh, you know, no, no, no. we had uh, well, the story about the uh, the the condom. Uh, sex stats. Yeah, yeah. Like this, it the, was a condom that tells you like whether or not you just had sex. I had a similar idea. It was a cock ring. <laughs> yeah. Because I figured, yeah, like there's you just too it? much. There's too much like fabric that goes into a condom. Like a cock mm. ring would be a little easier. Mm. I think someone actually made it. Yeah. Um, it's really? a it's a thing, but it's like in Europe where most of that stuff kind of generates from right. You know, weird yeah. Sex. Got to count your steps. But um, <laughs> right. David Sedaris. Uh, <laughs> the author came at one time and like, you know, they, they, they had him in as like a guest and like, he like gave like a lecture at Fitbit. Cause I guess he's like a pretty like adamant Fitbit guy. And he had an idea that he mentioned in front of the CEO that was pretty brilliant called the clit bit. And <laughs> it's just a good name. Yeah. <laughs> right. So it doesn't go on your wrist. It doesn't, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so instead of his whole thing was like, instead of vibrating for like a couple of seconds, when you reach your step goal, it, you know, when you reach climax, <laughs> it goes till climax. I'd know, like so. to reach there one time, and it goes. Yeah. It, it makes a sound. It goes so like, it's, it really incentivizes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it says just a young gun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, all right. Here's another good story because all right, this is like a pretty big demographic for Fitbit. Is like you know moms and like moms have walking groups and like mm, they, they push moms, they push fan. they push strollers and stuff. Uh, how come only women can use them? Well, I didn't say that, did I? Uh, mm. I right. run the tape. I think you use <laughs> females a noun. Uh, quick question: Would you do a, a, a Chinese accent for us? <laughs> no. Yeah, can you well, well, let's let's test your accent skills? <laughs> Anyways, Did so you? because because it's a pretty big demographic for them, one of the tests we had to do was push strollers. <laughs> mm-hmm. You push strollers, right? And so one time I'm pushing the stroller in the busy streets of San Francisco, and like you can't stop walking because they're like doing step counts. And I don't know if this conflicts with my NDA telling them the, the methods <laughs> of getting their data. But um, if you say I signed an NDA and then tell a story, it yeah, conflicts yeah. with the NDA. <laughs> but uh, anyways, I'm walking. You're very bad at this. I'm crossing the street and I see this this girl I went to high school with, and I'm pushing a stroller. So like. <laughs> I have a baby Ooh, in this person's yeah. mind. And I can't stop and I can't explain. I don't have a kid. I'm doing this test for Fitbit, but no. I signed this NDA, so I can't tell you. You just probably so, look like you just stole a child. I right, looked, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so I can't stop. So right. I like, you know, <laughs> they I, I see them. Up. They obviously make eye contact. I'm like, uh, uh. And like, they cross the street. I have to cross the street because I can't stop, you know? Mm. And so like, this person texts my other friend like, does Cal have a baby now? And I'm like, I'm like, I love rumors like this. I'm yeah. Like, I'm like, yeah, I have a baby. Yeah. That's... But, I, I saw them later, and I, you know, like they f- unfortunately found out I don't actually have a baby. If but. they're like, hey, "Hey, so do you have a baby?" You'd be like, I "Did <laughs> gave it back." Yeah, uh, <laughs> didn't work yeah. right. Yeah, so. it uh, it was a bit of a Lambie situation. <laughs> a little bit. Do you know Lambie? Uh, 
I don't, but I disagreed anyways because I didn't want to sound like a fool. No. Oh, uh, well, you know, you, you, I, you I sound like more time. of a fool if you have a podcast that's dedicated to talking about Lambie. Yes. Uh, yes. Lambie was Lena Dunham's uh, dog. Lena Dunham uh, and Jack yeah. Antonoff had a dog and they gave it they gave it up because they said its previous owner it had a very rough upbringing and uh it just couldn't be around people and then after they said that the the place where they got it was like uh excuse me that dog was completely fine what the fuck did you do to this dog and they had it for like two years and then like after two years they were just like nah we don't want it anymore yeah see the thing is like lena lena dunham people have finally come around to like the whole lena dunham like like, oh she's an asshole but like from the very beginning like i had friends that were into girls i'm like dude like how do you watch this? Really? I watch. I, 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 yeah. Like I just it had nothing to do with her. Even like as like a human being, I was just like, dude, like this is painful to watch, man. Like, I, uh, it, I think it came out when it came out. I think they were playing the people. They were playing people that that was my age. You know, they were my age. Like, yeah. so it was like, people who were like a couple years out of college. And it, this was before everything was uh everything sold itself on being realistic you know like this is realistic and you can really identify with it see i i don't typically like shows like that really yeah and i find the situations like and they're always like in like the city and it's always like you know what i mean yeah like and so yeah i was always like man lena dunham sucks why is everyone someone that's like like hyped on lena dunham my thing was i was like She's not the greatest, but I don't know why everyone feels the need to always like Drag shit on her. Lena Dunham. And then the Odell Beckham thing happened, and I was like, yeah. "Oh fuck, Lena Dunham is like the biggest ass." Like, like that, that made me realize exactly the p- type of person Lena Dunham yeah. is because we, like, we don't actually know the fucking celebrities that we talk about or whatever. Like I was saying to to you at breakfast this morning, like if you accidentally tweeted something that was offensive, that's your thing now. That like if you say something that is uh, that that was un that y- you didn't mean to be offensive to like I don't know deaf people yeah. then the thing then if they're they're like yo do you listen to the story so far oh yeah they're the one with the dude who hates deaf people and when in reality you weren't even thinking about deaf people you know it's just easy I mean like the minute people start saying that then it just gets I mean everything comes through everyone's Twitter feed the same it's like mm-hmm. there's no context there's nothing they just see like what. That guy did that. Yeah, and it's like boom. Yeah, so I it's always like, what man like. So I always try to take that with a grain of salt. Where like this person did this, that's not the only thing about them. We don't it's actually like a know highlight. them. It's it, like a weird, yeah, like, yeah. It's like me tweeting about Baron Trump, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. It's right. Like, like you're this guy who hates kids. <laughs> yes, and like, like well, obviously it's not. How wrong. You hate actually, your own kind. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, but uh, someone had said pick on someone your own size one day to Pete, and he was like, okay, I've got a tweet. And then he said it, and everyone was like, asshole, and you yeah. can't fucking win. But so, yeah, I always try to take that with a grain of salt of that's not the only thing about them. But when the Odell Beckham thing came out, I was like, all right, I now fully know everything about Lena Dunham and the type of person she is. See, to me, it's like, I mean, it is kind of like, like following celebrity stuff is kind of like following sports, where it's like, mm. if you don't really None like, of this matters. Well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But if you like don't really this pay attention to we're it, bored. Yes. you could hear from someone else like, oh, so-and-so pitched a really bad game, but I'm like, I don't watch that team. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> so when like Lena Dunham does something like stupid, I'm just like, I mean, like, yeah. I don't care about like, Lena Dunham. Yeah, yeah, but like, I'm not going to go be like up in arms about it. It's just like, it's just... Uh, yeah, I kind of expect that. Holiday cash. Do you need it? And I know where to get it. My bookie is the place to score serious cash on your sports predictions. Believe it or not, the holidays are just around the corner. And while that means plenty of parties, gifts, and spending, it also means there's lots of football, basketball, and hockey games you can score big on every day. Gender up and play like the pros on game day. You can play the money line, side or total. My bookie is your hookup for all your betting needs and offers super fast payouts when you win. Where you bet is just as important as who you're betting on. And if you want to make money betting the games, you got to go to mybookie.ag. They're the only site I'd recommend. I trust them, but you don't have to take my word for it. Check them out yourself. They have odds on every matchup and a mobile site that makes wagering on your smartphone a breeze. Join now and my bookie will match your deposit with up to a 50% bonus. Use promo code CLNS to activate offer. Visit mybookie.ag today. You play, you win, you Get paid. Uh, you said today that you don't like gifts, and after yeah, we, uh, after, <laughs> after we beat the shit out of you, sitting next to the, yeah, sitting next to the we gift guy, done mercilessly slaughtering you. Uh, we, uh, you actually had some good points. Well, all right. So, because immediately I'm like, all right, hey, gifts, and then Pete's over here who basically makes his whole like mm. his whole thing is gifts. Gifts he, been very good to Pete. Yeah. <laughs> he's been good to Pete, but like these are purposeful gifts. They have they have like value in that they're like. 
you're basically taking highlights and you're giving it to me in like a bite size. Yes. News. So it's like I, you know, I like hockey and like I'll see a hockey highlight. I'm like, okay, here's like here's the the meat of it, right? Like this five seconds with this cool play or something. Mm. So like that's one version of a gif. And then what I was explaining is like in Twitter moments where it's like. This is supposed to be like news and like, it's like, oh, like so-and-so doesn't feel very good about this, where it's like, they basically just set this person up to be at the mercy of Twitter to be people like what you really don't like, like, I don't know. Or like you put ketchup on your waffles, like, well, and people like post all the gifts, like, oh, or people like Durs mm. throwing up out of the bowl. Yeah. 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 Or it's like, like the, uh, the, the, no, like a dozen stock gifts. Yeah. Basically. I love them. Yeah. People don't even <laughs> use words anymore. Yeah. It's like, or it's like, all right. So like Australia just passed gay marriage. So mm. it's like a thousand gifts of like celebrities that like, it's always celebrities at award shows just going like, oh yeah. I'm like, yeah, so dude, Jonah like, Hill, these ones. Yeah, yeah. This is actually really South Australia that is upsetting. The PM of Australia after Malcolm Young died, mm-hmm. the rhythm guitarist of ACDC, oh, yeah. the rock legend, mm-hmm. he couldn't he couldn't name a single ACDC song. Really? This is the guy in Australia, and this is like the one of the I mean the biggest rock band yeah. of all time. Can't that name was, a single song. So ACDC's that's not the biggest. Rock so that's band way band. worse than. So previously, the worst one there was. Uh, so Obama has always been like a big sports guy. Yeah, you know. Uh, he was, someone was interviewing him and they were like, you of course grew up uh, a big White Sox fan. Who, uh, who was your favorite player growing up? And it's really awkward. And he, he just, he clearly doesn't know <laughs> one player who's ever played for the White Sox. And he yeah. goes, uh, all of them. <laughs> well, well, the thing is, I, uh, I also like the Cubs. <laughs> it wasn't just the White Sox. And that was his answer. Like he just couldn't name a just baseball totally diverting player. the, yeah. Uh, yeah. Sammy Sosa uh, and uh, uh, John Kerry didn't he didn't know uh, David Ortiz's name he called him Manny Ortez oh and then weird. he was like oh he was like uh, David Ortez uh, no it's David Ortiz and Manny Ortez and oh, I was like no nope, no Ortez anywhere dude <laughs> um, but I, just, I don't know I, not know being the the Prime Minister of Australia and not knowing who your second biggest star ever Who's is the first Angus Young. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, well, yeah. All right. So I feel like when you become the PM of Australia, they're like, all right, well, here's a guitar. Play like a ACDC riff. Hmm. And then like you get to be the PM. Like you have to do that. I actually like think part that of the thing. ACDC might be a band where if you give a guitar to someone who like you knows any chords, yeah. and you could say play an AC, ACDC song and you could just guess how it goes. Those are my first words. Like ACDC. Yeah. Like ACDC. Yeah. They like, teach you. I like, was a baby. I knew that they rocked and they were Once cool. you know how yeah. to hold a guitar, you can play a D chord and that's basically every ACDC song yeah. ever. Yeah. Um, do your, uh, Steven Adams. Oh, like, yeah. Check this out. Um, <laughs> I'm Steven Adams. I play basketball for the Oklahoma City Thunder. And what do you say when someone comes into the paint? I say, I'm going to block your shot. And then I go, there'll be none of it. And I swipe it away. (laughs) And then I give the ball to a teammate. (laughs) The best part is that Steven Adams is not even Australian. I say, throw me the ball. Kick it out. Sometimes I kick it out. Uh, We were playing 2K. And I played okay for a quarter and then just kind of died. But... I was Steven Adams a lot, and I brought it up the court. That's like kind of like dad. that's kind of like life. You play a quarter, and you just kind of die. <laughs> yeah, well, so like I played. For sure, DJ. I, yeah. yeah, I played a quarter. I learned all I needed to do was be like, "Yo, can I be Pete?" And once I learned the answer was, "Yeah, possibly." I was like, "All right, that's that, all I need." That's got a way better. <laughs> that's got a way better ring to it than the time I beat Shaq. Is the time I beat Pete? Yeah, the yeah. time I beat Pete. Oh, what was the score of the game? I beat him for a quarter. Yes. I didn't, it wasn't, I, I didn't, this isn't a score of the game type conversation. I, I, I tested it, but I yes. didn't buy it. I, yes. I, it was I, a game of runs. We yes. just came up with another ex ambassador song. Tested it, didn't buy it. I, 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 I tested it, didn't buy it. One of my friends is a musician and he's in a rock band. And one day, him and two of his friends made a pop country song. And it, uh, that was a good idea. And yeah, yeah. It, but like in a, it was only slightly tongue in cheek. Like yeah. if you listened to it and didn't know that they were kind of mocking it, you'd think it was a real song. But like the chorus was, 
it, it was it was like like three two one I think I hit a home run something like that <laughs> and like it's like builds up and like everything stopped like three two one I think I hit a home run something like that and I feel like we could do something like that with uh, X Ambassadors type song okay let's yeah do it. yeah you guys ever hear Scott Stapp's uh, Marlin song yes yeah. no I've that heard T Pain's Dolphin song though okay I imagine both of those are not good yeah. Uh, how does Scott Stapp's... Oh, it's very bad. It's pretty bad. How does it... Uh, we can't play it because um, then... It's like a stolen bass. <laughs> yeah. It's like a... It's, it's like, like a, a double anthem. play. He's like, go on, Marlins, make us proud. It's <laughs> it pretty was, good. It was one of those things where like he had like uh, some some chord progression kicking around for a while that could be a decent song. Yeah. And he they were like, yo, we need you to do a baseball song. And he's like... I'm going to use this shit that I've had that I've been saving for a while. This was <laughs> yeah. this could have been the next with arms wide open, but you know what? I'm going to do you guys a solid. And then it comes out and you're Let's like, eh, Scott Stapp, knock it off. Sure left that one on the floor. Are they still uh, are they still kicking around? I don't know. I think so I'm going to give Nickelback a little bit of credit here. Ooh, we want yeah. to talk about that. All yeah. right. All right. Did so, we talk about that last night? Uh yeah. I'm yes. gonna, I'm going to say that Nickelback was more resilient and that the world looks at Nickelback and goes, "You're the worst band ever." And we all hate you. And they keep playing shows. You th- I think Creed, I think it got to them. I think people were like, "Creed, we don't like oh, you guys. Yeah. You guys suck." And then the dude like was probably like, "I'm just trying to do this thing that I love to do and you guys all hate it." But yeah. like, you know, and that would that would maybe drive you a little Nickelback you know who else like probably? steered into the skid. Like yes. they make fun of themselves now. Yes. Yeah. Um I would say Creed's a great example there. Also, P.O.D. P.O.D., though, is like... Where, like, once they got the reputation of being lame... I, I See, I never saw them as that band because, like, they did that thing where, like, when they... Like, they had their songs that, like, I think people knew generally, but then, like, I don't know if they had as much staying power as a band like Nickelback. Yeah, yeah. I saw them like, at... They're a nostalgia band. Like, whenever their songs come out, it's still kind of cool, and you're like, oh, I know that song. It's cool. yeah. I, like, oh, I saw them at Ozfest, and they were considered the they were like the eye roll band. Oh, really? Uh, they were like the why are they? That's weird band. to me. Because yeah. what they had Youth of a Nation, Boom. What yeah. Was the other song? So it was before Boom. It was off. Uh, what's the uh, breathe? In. No, that's fucking breathe that's, in, breathe out. That's um, no, well, that's Bush. But, uh, yeah. but uh, I was gonna I was gonna start singing Rolling by Limp Bizkit, but not <laughs> that. Uh, that song's great. That song but, though is like all right. Just to back up, because that's a song that I actually think is like kind of funny is like uh like um the fact that the chorus is just breathe in breathe out yeah like he's just reminding breathe himself <laughs> like out. like he's... he was taking a vocal lesson and they're like breathe in breathe out that's how you sing and then oh like, i got a great song he's like i can't remember i'm singing the chorus i can't remember so he's like breathe in breathe out breathe in he's like oh yeah uh, i got it you, uh, you're oh self town what's it called self town Soft okay. Town was their their that was their first big hit. You mentioned Crazy Town too the other day. Yeah, crazy. So Crazy Town, I think it was the year after I went to Ozfest, but but they, they were, were like, booed off the stage at like multiple. It, shows. it makes sense though, because they were like they were basically like Sugar Ray on meth. Like <laughs> yeah. they were like this like trying to do the same kind of vibe as them, but like just didn't have the same target audience. I just found out this week it was that, like new metal uh, that Limp but... Biscuit is a reference to a penis. That makes sense. Well, yeah, penis. once you get limp the, in there, you, it could mean that. Yeah. Yeah, well, I didn't realize that until now. You it's guys, a great time to make that realization. You guys keep tabs on that band at all? Limp no. Biscuit? Yeah. No. They're kind of like, I mean... They, How's they, Wes? They, well, so Wes is actually a pretty is interesting the eyes guy. guy? He's got to be. In, he's, yeah. Well, he's like he's the guitarist. Yeah, he's like the yeah. dude who's through all like the what makeup. What sucks and stuff. though is before the eyes and the makeup. Like the, the eyes came pretty late in their run. Like the eyes yeah. came, I think, like after Significant Other, maybe. So and like they were, the, yeah, they were right. kind of. I I felt that that kind of hijacked Limp Biscuit. You know, bands like this. Like this is what's really interesting about bands like that. Like I was never like really big into Limp Biscuit. Like growing up, but like. I'm definitely a big fan of West Borland, like just because he's an interesting dude. Mm-hmm. But like he has like a he like he takes in like um, renovates homes. He has a show. Oh, where really? he, does this. he like makes weapons, which is kind of cool. Like like have you guys watched that show like Forge and Fire? No. It's like basically dudes and like 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 um, blacksmiths like make weapons. Like he's like into that now, and he like he has like some side projects and stuff. But it's like that's always cool to be like, all right, what did the dude from that band Limp Bizkit like end up doing like? In his like twilight, you know what I mean. I um, I, I went to. There's no other way to say this. I did. I went to band camp. 
mm. one summer, mm. but it was like rock band camp. Okay. And it was um, it was a week long thing, and you go with your instrument, and they put you in a band based on like what you play, what like the, the, what they perceive your skill level to be, um, and. Then you spend the week like lessons, writing a song, and then at the end there is you a... You put your dick in a trumpet. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and then at the end there's a concert. And okay. uh, not to brag, we headlined. Mm. We were the last ones. Wow. Yeah. What was the name of your band? Uh, Delusional Beef. What? And the name of our song was Seatbelt. Seat nice. Belt. And the, uh, the... I think like the verse and the chorus were in different keys... And, but not in like a that was smart songwriting kind of way. It was like you just were trying to flex your music theory. So that's the thing. Like knowledge. Right now, I can play. I can play it off and be like, yeah, you know, the other bands they all did the same shit in one key. We were kind of going back and forth between keys, and it was really refreshing when you got back to the verse. But it wasn't every no. time. Like every change sounded fucking bad. <laughs> um, so it was a really bad song. But anyway, the bass. Uh, I remember this was like when Limp Bizkit and all those bands were going on, and I was. Um, my my friends and I like if you played an instrument when you were a kid maybe you weren't as big an asshole as I was like if like I thought that Malcolm Young when I was a kid was a bad guitarist because I never heard him play a fucking solo so I was like that guy doesn't do anything that's a very like like that's the reason Angus obviously gets like pimped out a lot yeah because it's like he's flashier he does that whole thing as a schoolboy outfit Malcolm's mm-hmm. in the back just holding it down yeah but you know that you become an adult when you're like oh I realize that this dude is like right holding it down. just like serving the song as well as he it's can a, it's a maturing thing yeah. yeah you're like oh dude Malcolm all along was the guy he yeah. was the one but I remember I was like me and my friends were like oh Limp Bizkit they 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 suck at their instruments and the bass teacher at that camp was like yo Sam Rivers, I think Sam Rivers is their bassist's name. Yeah. He's like, he's like really fucking good. Listen to Limp Bizkit songs. And you, yeah. like he is. <laughs> well, because you think, you think good is like the show off show, stuff. Yeah, like, like Ingve Malmsteen isn't my favorite guitarist. He's yeah. like the, the most outrageous sounding and shit, but like. It's the subtle but stuff. But like I prefer, like Eric Clapton doesn't fucking shred, you know? Yeah. He, he just plays the coolest sounding. So uh, Brian May is the same way. It's like a dude, like look at a band like The Strokes. Like mm-hmm. really, well, I mean. Not always simple, but like at least like their drummer, like a lot of it's like pretty simple, yeah. Like definition, but it's like it's like the timing and like the little like details of it and, and things is like pretty yeah. Brilliant. Their like, biggest song yeah. is just based around just playing one note over and over again. Yeah. Um, uh, Hang me up to dry yeah. by Cold War Kids is two notes and it's fucking dope. But Thunder Song that is <laughs> that song is Full two circle. chords and it's shitty. Like you can, so that's that's what separates the men. From you the don't boys. actually, you like, don't like it. If you can do well, like for all intents and purposes, it's like it's like time. it's a disposable pop song, is what I'm saying. You know, but you've listened to it eight times, and now you're trying to tell me. Oh, I can listen to a lot of like okay. not amazing music for a long time. Some of the concerts I've been to, man. Have you ever had to go to the bathroom on stage? Um, I've actually never had that problem. I have like I'm like a ritualistic peer before I go play. Mm. Oh yeah, I'm a nervous peer. I don't really get nervous to perform, but I'm like, I, in my mind, I'm like, God, what if I have to like piss during the set? Like I should piss like 18 times before the set. Did you <laughs> so choose the biggest instrument? So after you pee right before you go on and you got a little pee on your pants, <laughs> people can't <laughs> you see cover it. it up. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's why I wear black pants. Ah, you want to hear a fun fact that I heard and my pee glows I, I, in the dark. I really so. apologize if this is true and for bringing this up, if this is true. Okay. So apparently because Ozzy Osbourne is old and when people get old, their bladders get a little looser and mm-hmm. they tend to pee themselves. And apparently, I don't know if this is true or not, so don't take it for fact, but apparently there's moments where he wets his pants on stage okay. and they have, I think like some kind of misting or something mechanism to spray him when this happens. So it looks like he's just been like wow. wet on stage. So That's it's, interesting. it's like, so it's people like people have thought about peeing, there's a science it's like peeing in the ocean. Kind of. Yeah. 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 Like, no, this whole thing's soaked. And again, Ozzy's someone that like I hold I, I hold him in a high regard. I didn't thought some, didn't like Britney Spears pee herself it happens. on stage. It's natural. Um, there I was like know. something that happened uh, like ten years ago or something. I don't know. I would just wear I an think adult a lot diaper. of bands I've listened to have peed themselves on stage as just like a as a gimmick, like yeah, Gigi like, Allen or something. Yeah, like, yeah, we're cool. You know, a lot of the podcasts I listen to, they just pee themselves. I actually so. looked yeah, up. Uh, I googled. Um, uh, wear diaper to music festival. Yeah, <laughs> what? Dude, yeah. 
I well, mean, you were going to be the first fucking person I called if there was if it was like a smart idea where <laughs> yeah. music festival. I mean, think about it. It's like you if you especially if you're in the front row. Yes. If yeah. you've ever been to like a huge concert, like you're not getting out to pee. Yeah. You're either whipping it out in the front lines and mm. can't do risking. that anymore because it'll be sexual assault. Yeah. Yes. I mean, it, yeah, yeah. Or he sexually you had his penis out. Yeah. yeah. So you don't do that. Um, so. My. You know what's wild? I uh, I was watching one of those like MTV uh, concert sh- uh, channels, whatever yeah. they have. Palla- and Palladium, Palladium. Yeah, Palladium. I was at my parents' house. And they, were, they were flipping through A-X-S. the channels, and like they stopped on. I think it was like a Killers, the the Killers playing at a festival or whatever. And they had the shots of like the huge fucking crowd. And I'm obviously like I'm like neurotic as fuck. And they're like, it is unbelievable that you go to these things and don't freak the fuck out by, like, the size of the, the crowd. It's pretty scary. Yeah, by the size <laughs> of, the, of the penis. Uh, they bust it out. Yeah, I mean, like, we had a we had a panic attack in uh, at Lollapalooza. Yes, but that was, the, honestly, that was the only one. You're right. I, I'm trying to think. Like, the, like Run the Jewels, they, they posted uh, a shot of them on stage at Boston Calling, and, like, I knew where we were in the crowd in that shot, and this, the... The crowd went for fucking miles, and I've never been, I've never been like I got to get out of this crowd. Hmm. And I know I totally it takes that. a few minutes to get through it too. So right. like if if anything happened, obviously that's why I mean when the fucking Vegas thing happened, I was like, holy fuck! Like the pe- you if you're there, yeah. you're fucking porked, you know? Right. Because it's it, fish in a barrel, and it's like it's just like that's what scares me too. Because like I actually mean. We've we've done like we did a festival in England. This is like a week after the Ariana Grande shooting. Oh god! And I was like, in my head, I was like, this has never been like so real a possibility. Mm. Where I, where I'm like, you know, like it's unrealistic. I think that would happen so soon after like one event. But you're like, I but it's fresh point. in your mind, right? Yeah. Where I'm just like, it's weird just seeing like the heightened security, like mm-hmm. it's still being fresh in everyone's minds over there. And it's just like just very eerie. And you're like, man, like. It sucks that that is like the first place people think of when they go, I'm going to go kill a bunch of people. So I'm going to go somewhere where people have gathered, like basically are corralled yeah. into a place. And it's like, that's just awful. Man. Yeah, so it's, it's totally fucked. I think that uh, I could be wrong. I think that for a while, um, I think that Ringo had like a, like a fear of um, like, what if they shoot the stage or something like that? I, well, just, I mean, like yeah. Dimebag got shot yeah. on stage. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, I mean, yeah. just... It, even in a club we played on this tour, I was telling you, like, two guys got shot and killed. It's like, I mean, that would seem like a more personal thing, but it's still, it's yeah. like, it's just like, it sucks that it's such a, like, it actually makes me sad that it's like such a, like, yeah. obvious, like, target. Or I know. Like it's like, and, it's like, yeah, after, not to do, like, the, oh, it could have been me thing, because it's, all, I, I'm always annoyed when, like, a tragedy happens. Yeah, and someone's like, like it wasn't, I, I was, was th- going to I blah, was blah, there blah. seven months ago. It's like, if you're, it could have been me. If the first word yeah. of your reaction is, is I, I yeah. then, like, shut the fuck up. But, uh, uh, yeah, 100%. But yeah. he'd, uh, he'd scouted Lollapalooza, where right. we'd gone a year before, and there was, like, a, we had a fucking scare where, during Third Eye Blind, uh, there were helicopters flying over the whole throughout the whole weekend, and one of the helicopters like got really, really low. And a guy, like there was a sniper in there, and really? we were like, "What the fuck is going on?" And we it's just crazy. like ran away from it, and, and it was like, just hovering. So yeah, it was, it was, it was just like, so uneasy. Yeah. That's weird. Yeah. Um, have you guys ever seen? I guess we can we can segue into a brighter note. Mm-hmm. But um, have you guys ever seen uh, the singer of Third Eye Blind's MTV Cribs? No. no. So he keeps, I bet he's barefoot the whole time. He's a pretty eccentric guy, mm. and he has in his home a cast model. It's like the shape of... It's like a body cast of the woman he lost his virginity to. Really? What? So the guy like contacted this woman and was like... How do you have Can that you conversation? Make, I know. I have a lot of money and how, now. And I how just, does this girl agree to it? I don't know. I mean, maybe it's just like it was a pivotal moment in his life, and he just wants to That is so token. strange. That's, well, what, what is it like a... It's like a cat, like a body, like a front cast. You know what I mean? It's not like um, it. It looks like um, just it's like, like a hollow. statue kind of thing. No, or? it's just like the. It's probably from the neck to like the torso, and it's just like it's a not plaster. Even the part you stick your dick in. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> that would be yeah. That'd probably be too far. <laughs> I I, uh, I saw they came to my college, and I just remembered that he was 
like the most loudly barefoot I'd ever noticed any person being. I think that's gross when people go barefoot on stage. Yeah. I think it's the grossest thing. I'm, I mean, I'm kind of like a germaphobe to mm. an extent. I, I don't know. Like I'm kind of OCD about like cleanliness and like if my feet are on, like if you've ever seen a carpeted stage, like it is the nastiest thing. It's got a, yeah. It's it is gotta, caked in just years of yes. loogies and sweat. Uh, and oh, like, gross. God, and people pissing themselves on stage. Oh, right. DG Allen defecating. It's, yeah. No one ever bothers to clean that stuff until it gets like gutted or like Bat remodeled. <laughs> and to think like, all right, you're barefoot and you're going to, you know, just like, and doing Prance that just because stage. like it looks you think it looks cool like, it's like it's a, such a hippie thing to do and plus i hate hippies so i'm like yeah. it has that element to it too so i'm like it's a mm. weird fucking thing uh we want to talk about guys with good speaking voices not just guys could be ladies one of the people on my list lady not to brag who uh aya cash she she does everything perfect for me uh the, she's the girl from easy and you're the worst oh right okay. she has like uh she has like a british accent without it being british she's english but uh, she speaks with the cadence of a uh, a British person. Interesting. I think uh, I have like two people that stand out above the rest. The best speaking voice in the world mm. is uh, Liev Schreiber. No. Yes. No, it isn't. Yes, yes uh, it is. I need to hop on my phone. So we can't. Sure uh, so we're not going to talk about uh, the obvious ones. Like Morgan Freeman doesn't well, count. Yeah. yeah. Like everybody. Uh, obviously, he James has the Earl best Jones. voice. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously. Uh, mine. My number one is probably Will Arnett. Really? Great. Yeah. yeah. Especially in, in his role as Job. It's like yeah, therapeutic yeah. to listen to him talk. Yeah, I, love Will I mean, he has he has a good one for sure. Um, the number two on my list is the guy from the Grand Ole Opry. Yes, yeah, that uh, guy is the best. I you, always Eddie something. Do you guys watch um, what's that Netflix show? The cartoon that just came out, Nick Kroll's thing. Uh, Big oh, Mouth. Big Mouth. So I thought the puberty monster was Will Arnett. It's Nick Kroll doing the voice. Oh, really? Yeah. He does, uh, he does, he does a, a lot of, of those ones. voices. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that weird? I think my favorite character in that show is the uh, the gym teacher. The sad, yeah, the yeah. sad gym teacher. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's um, good. I like the monster, though. He's, he's good, too. You know who might be number two on my personal list? He's just got an outstanding speaking voice. Maybe better than his singing voice, John Mayer. Interesting. I love John Mayer so much. John Mayer's speaking voice is quite unbelievable and his instagram stories are so fucking good he's the best at social media it's I don't know, wild I yeah don't, yeah no i mean you introduced me to a snapchat and it's really funny yeah he's so fucking funny. um i've heard this is really unfortunate i was on a flight and i was asking obviously this flight attendant and i were talking and she wanted to tell me that the rudest person she ever attended to on a flight was john mayer oh no but no, what it, i refused was... i refused to hear it i said you know it's probably a bad time in his life right i bet it, it was, was probably... during the like the two years i was like or before the two years when he was doing the shit that made him have to take two years off and that's what i was saying i was saying like the n-word did he say the n-word oh yeah in a uh, playboy uh playboy he man. did that in the playboy interview yeah. too that playboy thing was it was, a, it was like rife really with pit. problems yeah, yeah. Huh. uh yeah he's uh yeah, I think he said he had an N-word pass because he worked with Kanye. Oh, yeah. yeah. It, was, it was That was like the most tone-deaf mm. interview that anybody could ever give. I don't even... I heard of the interview, but I actually, actually never have read the interview itself. Yeah, I'm trying to remember if I did uh, do all of that. He... Um, obviously, the Jessica Simpson stuff wasn't terrific. What was that? What was that? He just like know. spoke like very graphically about his relationship with Jessica Simpson. Oh yeah, sexual napalm. Sexual napalm. It's like sports again. Like I just don't, I just don't follow it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I can for sure see that guy being into some weird sex shit. Mm. John Mayer. Oh yeah. Yeah, I think he's into weird everything shit. Yes. Yeah. Correct. I say. I say. Let, let that. Kirkland. Let that be him. Yeah. Let your. Yeah. Fr- yeah. Let your freak flag fly. It's, it's like if he wants to wear his Kirkland white shoes, let him be a freak elsewhere. You know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. You. You. You can do that. Just. Good, just yeah. get the hell away. So who's on our list? Um, so I've. I've got a couple. Okay. Let's. But let's should, go we, for should we recap? Who do we have? No. Uh, we have Will Arnett. We have the guy from the Grand Old Opry. Uh, okay. uh, Leave Schreiber. Um and uh, Aya Cash. Okay, I mentioned earlier. I think mine is David Putty. Oh yeah. yeah, he's got a good voice. He was the only redeeming part of the series of unfortunate events hmm. series. That I don't think I saw the series. I saw the uh, the one with Jim Carrey. Yeah, it was yeah. good. Either of them, or, or read the books. The, they Not never, as good as the they never did those books justice. I think, I think the, I don't really remember the original movie, but I remember when I saw it. It was like they tried to, I think, merge a couple books into one, and it didn't really work. And then this most yeah, recent one was just like, yeah, I mean, it was just, it was kind of cringy. Okay. Was, yeah. And uh, what else was I saying? Oh, 
So that that's that's my dude. And then I'll say if I had a soundbite, I would have a soundbite of Winona Ryder saying, "My boy." Ooh, yeah, she's got a yeah. She's got a very like sweet but um but uh weathered voice. Particularly the way she says, "My boy." <laughs> yes. I just I love that. Um how, here's one. Jermaine Clement. Who's that? Who that? Uh the guy from Flight of the Concords. Oh, okay. He's, oh right, yeah, yeah. yeah. Is he like the the ugly one? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is he the ugly one? He's got a he's got an awesome speaking voice. Also, Tim Curry. Okay. Tim Curry's got a cool voice. Mm, yeah, but that's more of like his accent than yeah. his voice. Uh, now you're just talk, like, talking people with cool accents. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Who's? The, oh man. All right. I'm trying to think Steven of the guy. Stephen Adams. Who's the dude? That played, uh, I should know his name off the top of my head, but the dude that played Green Goblin in Spider-Man. Willem Dafoe. Willem Dafoe. Ooh. I like William Dafoe's voice, too. So, I mean, he's got to have something going for him, because John, he is ugly. He's in the John Wick movies, too, which... Oh, yeah. Well, the first Is one. he really? Yeah. Um, you, huh. Have you not seen John Wick? I have seen John Wick. I don't remember. Those movies are great. Being John, being those John those movies are. Do you like those Wick. movies? Yes. I still okay. got to go back and okay. rewatch the yes. first one because I watched the first one. Not I watched the first one by myself on demand and I didn't realize that it was a goof. Okay. And so I thought it was serious and I was like, yo, this shit is the lamest thing in the world. And then we went to see the second one in a group and within the first 10 seconds, they're like, uh, John Wick's mad at us. Because we killed his dog. And then the whole audience started laughing, and I was like, oh, okay. So, like, they're trying to be stupid. Okay, yeah, this is awesome. See, I don't see it that way. Really? Yeah. You thought it was serious? Well, it's just like, it's just such a simple plot line. That's why I love it. It's like, okay. and you know, like, in some weird way, I think people care about dogs more than they care about other people. Oh, absolutely. Oh, well, that's, so yeah, they're, that's, they're like, that's not a weird thing. They're like, they could kill his, like, wife. They could kill, they're like, no, they kill his, like, this cute puppy he had. And then he just yeah, goes on, like, far. he just hmm. goes on this, like, revenge spree. And I'm like, that's perfect. I think that uh, Josh Tillman has a great speaking voice. Of course, of he, course, he again, great voice speaking and singing. I think that that Josh Tillman and Aya Cash are on my like well-rounded Mount Rushmore. You know who else I love? I love uh, Idris Elba. Oh yeah, voice. yeah. And which both, one? In both the because, British and American versions. Yes, uh, but I, I have not heard speak. his Australian accent. <laughs> no, I think. you know one that I I do like is is it Sofia Ver- Vergara? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah. I think a lot of people think her voice is annoying, but I like it. I don't know why. Well, we've discussed how just like the the, the piles of racism that have been put into how she's used for everything, like. I I don't know. She's like, they, like, they, they always says, want to. They always want her to come off as like ditzy and dumb. And I guess like, that's true. For all we know, she she's like maybe one time let her. Be, she's, well, I think she's that's, smart chef. I guess that would be right. the the component that like is off putting for people because they really make her like like emphasize right. Yeah, and uh, I don't watch Modern Family or like you know like roles like that. I've only really ever seen her. I think in like normal speaking settings so yo you, you seriously gotta watch chef she's in that chef chef yeah. is a really good movie it's you such a good it. uh and um gary clark jr's in it okay yeah they they see him play on the top of a thing it's like your imagine dragons concert <laughs> well i can't make movie recommendations anymore because pete over here doesn't like any of mine well, what didn't he like he sent brawl, me uh brawl, brawl from cell block nine nine brawl in cell block nine brawl from cell block nine nine if uh, the runtime is as long as its title then i'm not interested in seeing it either <laughs> it uh it movie. was a fine movie it was okay it was very corny i thought hmm. see that's just weird to me hmm. but this is also i mean pete and i don't we're very different in a lot of ways. He mm. owns dogs. I own reptiles. Snakes. Oh, I was. I, was Snake a, I, knew, I know that you own reptiles, and for some reason, I thought you were going to say you own cats. And I was going to. I was going to. No, I had a guy. very. You off. I had a very bad cat experience. My was sis- it you encountered a cat? No, 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 no. My sister had a cat. It was not a friendly cat. I don't okay. think cats often are friendly. I think cats, in their mind, are always thinking of how am I going to oh, yeah. bring down yeah. humankind. Cats get a bad rap. Well, so. because you, they're bad. You leave the home, they try to Some turn the oven on deliberately to blow your home up. Yeah, I I hate cats. I think cats can get a bad. And rap. you know what? I'll be honest. I'm a dog lover, but I, there are a lot of dogs that I hate. I my, one of my parents' dogs I hate, and I tell her all the time. I've never called her by her actual name. I think her name's Minnie. I call her Mindy. 
I, th- I think dogs do it out of like they don't know any better, and I think cats do it deliberately. Hmm. Like every time I showed up to school, and my my hoodie smelled like cat piss because I knew my sister's cat crawled into my laundry. You cat pissed yourself on and stage. Pissed on my laundry. I was like, it did that, so I would show up at school, and it's having a laugh at home. Oh. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> and I hate this. Your... Yeah, that's what Secret this Life of Pets should have been. Did you see that movie? Um, yeah, that yeah, movie real piece of shit. Bad, yeah. right? Um. I honestly don't remember because I watched it on a plane. I think I fell asleep. It so. was so fucking bad. That's what it should have been, though. It should have been cats being like, yo, let's cut the shit. We're not cutesy little things. Let's let's piss on some laundry. Great animal movie? Zootopia. I didn't see that one. Did you either. not? Really? Mm. It's a good one. I'll have to do a screening. Yeah, it's good. Uh, anything else you just want to say? Um, yeah, as they say in Boston. Red Sox. And the Thunder Song. Um... <laughs> It's, as they, let's do it again. As they say in Boston, Red Sox and the Thunder. As they say in Boston, Hey, get out of here! I'm walking here. Red Sox and big cocks. As they say in Boston, Thunder. <laughs> as Who do you say, think you are? As they say in Boston, Hello, I'm Stephen Adams. I'm going to play basketball with my teammates. <laughs> You are unbelievable. Unbelievable basketball. I play it all day with all of my friends. <laughs> all right. I think that the Stephen Adams voice should be a uh, should be like a little squirrel. <laughs> like, <laughs> hello, hello. I'm 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 an Australian basketball player like Kyrie Irving.